You are just maggots, swarm into the corpse of a dying god. Scrub mentality is the biggest barrier preventing what is commonly known as the casual player from ascending towards a competitive player. Casual to me means someone who plays the game on and off, on occasion, whenever they feel like it. A scrub player, however, can play this game one hour a month or ten hours a day and still be a scrub. Casual is a time temporal issue, not a question of competency. You can be a casual competitive player. Scrubs, however, are shit players. I don't mean shit players like me who are just like bad at the game. I mean shit players who are bad at the game, don't realize it, and they try justify their shitness. Scrubs typically have delusional senses of grandeur and think they know better and think they're better than they actually are. Or at the very least, are objectively bad players but don't want to do anything about it, like trying to learn and get better. So what is a scrub player? Well I'm gonna go through a list of what makes a player shit and if you know or say some of these things then chances are you're a scrub and you should probably get good. There's no creativity in Yu-Gi-Oh anymore, everyone just net decks. Let's begin with the stupidest and probably biggest argument of them all. There's lots of creativity in this game, you're just too fucking blinded by your love of Table 500 to see it. Let's say two people have a common cold. One of them gets a nice doctor who ends up curing it. So the other guy goes up to the doctor like, alright mate, can you fix me up too? So the doctor tells him how to make the antidote and he goes and cures himself. Is that net decking? No, it's all fucking net decking. For those of you too stupid to understand metaphors and analogies, the person with the cold is a Yu-Gi-Oh player. The doctor is someone who tops a premiere event and that cure is the deck list. If the deck list works, why would you not net deck it? Why would I not use a deck that wins an event and it's literally scientifically proven to do well? Why are you mad at people for taking something that works and using it. And anyway, on the contrary, net decking promotes a lot of creativity. The average player will go out and copy the deck card for card, sure, but then they've lost their edge. What's an edge? Well, an edge is what you get during an event by playing a certain deck. Let's say for some reason I'm going to an event populated predominantly by Ritual Beast players. My edge would be to main deck Imperial Iron Wall, for example. Likewise, when everyone net decks a build, my edge would be to try build around what everyone is net decking. But then you have to go one step further and net level people designing their decks around net decking because you now for the next event you have to design your deck around the deck that's designed around the deck that was net deck it's fucking net deck inception how is that not creative that's the very definition of creativity you aren't cool because you don't want to acknowledge objectively good ideas and theories prick you're not a real x deck player i played that deck before anyone else did cool cool like, do you want a medal for playing Psyframes because they later happen to do well at one event? People will play whatever does well and gives them the best chance of winning. Stop being some kind of Yu-Gi-Oh hipster cunt and deal with it. That's called life. People will do what makes the most sense. People will play what makes the most sense. People will do and play whatever gives them the best chance of doing well and winning. You're not a special snowflake at all. Actually, you're more like a bratty dickhead. You only won because you paid more money for your deck. Are you actually going to bitch at someone for doing well at something they like because they invested more than you? You're actually complaining at someone for doing well at an activity they like because they allocated more time and resources towards that activity. If you don't want to invest, build your deck around a budget or shut up and don't complain. Nobody cares you can't do well at this game because the best deck you can get a hold of is battling boxers. Just get a better deck or shut up. I'm undefeated with my X deck. Congratulations, you've managed to defeat the equivalent of apes licking windows with your rogue deck. That therefore must mean your deck is competitive and viable, right? Well, no, because why don't you try play your deck over a long event, or a bigger, more premier event, or try claim to higher ratings on DN. If you do, I promise you'll realize just how inconsistent and bad your deck is. This is known as results-oriented thinking. Just because you've taken promising data from a small pool sample of results doesn't make your deck fucking good. Come back when you've tried your deck 100 times against people who've done more than just top 16 the 12 man local. I think X Rogue deck is great this format, people don't know how to build it. Good for you. So you're telling me every other pro player on the entire planet just somehow overlooked the potential of Volcanics and Firefist and whatever other dog shit you're playing this format? You're the only one who's picked up on the fact that Blackwings have potential in 2016, yeah? It's just you, like no one else. It's just completely gone over the heads of every other good, like, semi-competent player. Go fuck yourself. Player preference! There's no such thing as player preference in this game. There's two kinds of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Optimal and suboptimal. This entire game is deeply rooted in mathematics, statistics, and probability. The numbers 
really don't care about what you prefer. Numbers are just numbers. You either give yourself the best statistical chance of winning a tournament by playing the most optimal build, or, or you can play Cosmo with no Dart Destroyers, with Fire Fist cards. I love playing X card, it's won me so many games. There's only optimal and suboptimal builds and cards in this game. Yeah, sure, Magic Cylinder will probably win you a game. My Body as a Shield will probably win you a game. Anti-fucking-Raigeki will probably win you a game. That doesn't make these hyper-situational cards good because they've occasionally done what they were designed to do. You have to play cards that are versatile, that are good in most situations, that can help advance your game state, achieve your deck's win condition, facilitate your combos, not poison of the old fucking bitch just because it burned for game that one time. I was top decking X card, you would have lost. Yeah, well, you didn't top deck it then, did you? You lost. That's all that matters. You could have top decked that card, and then I could have topped another card, and then I could have responded with a different card, and then you would have topped a different card, and then you would have made a different play, and then I would have done this, and then you would have done that. Do you see where I'm going with this? You can't theorize what would have happened. You lost. Deal with it. Does the match slip with your opponent's signature on it give a fuck what you were trying to top deck? Do the tiebreakers going into day to an event care about whether or not you were going to draw into that top deck? No, it, it doesn't matter in the end. It doesn't care. Neither should you. Take it on the chin like a man, get over yourself and move on. I didn't draw any of my X cards. Too fucking bad, mate. If your deck relies on drawing a specific card or you lose, then chances are your deck is just fucking awful and you should either play something else or build it differently so you don't just auto-lose if you don't open your win condition. Maybe you could have designed your deck differently. You could have played a different deck altogether. Maybe you could have made a different play. Maybe your mum could have aborted you. The reality is Yu-Gi-Oh players need to stop projecting their losses on everything else under the sun except themselves. Like 75% of the time or something in this game, you lost the match because of you and you alone. The more that you blame external factors for your losses, the more that you'll just get frustrated and the more stagnant you'll become as a player. Breaking that mentality is the biggest step forward to improving and becoming a truly great player. We can all blame our opponent for topping this or MSTing the right back row or, you know, we didn't draw the right card, but the reality is that most of your losses are yours and nobody else's. Now that you've heard our whispers, it is only a matter of time. Until you belong.